Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of five in a new series that goes a little bit outside of the realm of science, and we're going into the paranormal. The paranormal is something that I think is really important. I think you're gonna really enjoy this episode, so make sure you subscribe so you get all five of the episodes for this week. You can check us out on iTunes if you'd rather listen during your commute or whatever. There's an audio podcast over there. It's all five of our episodes in one. If you are new to D News Plus, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. There's a little bar at the bottom of your screen. It'll be in every episode. It'll help you kind of navigate through. If you wanna hear something again, you can click on the bar. This week, we're gonna talk about when we first started looking looking at the paranormal and what it even is. We're gonna look at the research about paranormal activity and what that looks like and how science can even look into something that's technically outside of the realm of science. And then of course, how then we've failed to actually address some things in paranormal and understand what they really are. And then we'll wrap up with why we should even care about the paranormal. But first, the question that we had when we started writing this series was, what does it mean for something to be paranormal? Like where, what is paranormal? Because it's not just aliens and ghosts, you know, there's more to paranormal than that. The definition of paranormal really breaks down to something that cannot be explained by science. Para, in this case, means something beyond or alongside, you know, something next to normal, essentially, another way to say abnormal, but we're not saying that it's abnormal because that seems like a value judgment. This is something alongside or beyond normal. Another word that comes up a lot when you're talking about the paranormal is the supernatural. Except Sam and Dean, you guys rock. Which, when you look at the definitions, that means pretty much the same thing as paranormal. It's something beyond scientific explanation. It's not natural, it's supernatural. It's not normal, it's paranormal. It's extra normal. This term is actually kind of older. Supernatural can mean any number of things from uh, gods and angels and religious subjects to all the way up to ghosts and aliens and things. There's another one that you may not have heard and that's pre-natural, and there are people at Merriam-Webster who've come up with this and they say pre-natural is beyond science as well. But we're gonna mostly just use the term paranormal in this series. It's the one that makes the most sense to us and it kind of describes what we're really getting into, but it's all gonna be the same. We're gonna talk about some supernatural stuff and some pre-natural stuff. So before there was science, before there was a scientific method, there was no such thing as paranormal because we hadn't defined what normal was. We, we hadn't really thought about it, right? There was just the world. Then we started categorizing it and splitting it up into chunks and we realized how our world works and what the limitations of some things were and thus we could create a normal. We didn't know that there was a difference between paranormal and normal. A lot of life's mysteries used to just be explained by a higher being, right? A volcano is going off, oh, that's God. Uh, drought, that's probably God too. Disease, God. Birth, God. Size of, you know, how tall you grew, that's God. What color something was, God, you know. All of those things were attributed to what we would call supernatural at the time, but it turned out we can explain all of those, so thus they fit into this little box of normal. If you think about things in those terms, what would paranormal really be then? So we can start with the obvious, ghosts. That's obvious, right? That's definitely paranormal. It's outside the realm of scientific explanation. If they exist, we don't know how to explain that they exist. So if ESP and being psychic is real, we don't really know how to explain that. We kind of have some grasp of the brain and how the brain works, but until we completely understand it, ESP and being psychic, that's still paranormal. It's on the edge of paranormal. And we don't have the exact science to understand UFOs necessarily, aliens, UFOs, not just like, I don't know what that is, UFO, like an actual alien. So traveling to other galaxies and intergalactic, well, travel in any way is all probably considered a paranormal activity because we don't know how to do it. The Loch Ness Monster, if it is real or were real, that would be paranormal because it's beyond the grasp of science of how this giant dinosaur thing could live in a Scottish lake somewhere because it's too cold and it doesn't have enough food to support itself and it's too, uh, anyway. But now there's all a philosophical part of this too, right? Probably didn't think we'd be getting into philosophy on a science podcast, but we're gonna. Because once you start defining what's normal and what's not normal, what is paranormal or supernatural or whatever, then you start getting all sorts of weird thoughts, like are unicorns paranormal? 
I mean, there's no solid proof that a unicorn ever existed. It's a horse with a big thing on its head. There's no solid proof that ghosts existed. So a horned horse, that might be beyond scientific explanation. It doesn't fit in the little normal box. Does that mean it's a paranormal thing? Don't tell Lily Singh that I said so. The difference is no one's ever had an experience with a unicorn. At least not that anybody knows of, right? No one had a unicorn sighting by the highway. And that's a major part of what makes something paranormal. Is it something that happened that we're trying to explain? A ghostly encounter, an alien abduction, a Bigfoot sighting. And we're taking science and we're trying to fit it into what normal is. Or really what we're trying to do is make the normal box a little bigger, right? Paranormal can't just be something that, you know, I just thought of, you know, leprechauns and unicorns, they're probably not paranormal because people don't necessarily have leprechaun and unicorn sightings. But things like deja vu or the placebo effect, that's sort of paranormal, right? We have theories, but we don't really know how deja vu works. The placebo effect has been studied a lot. We don't have a lot of super solid conclusions on why that works. We're gonna get more into that later in the series. We came into this with a simple idea of what paranormal meant, right? Paranormal, it means weird stuff, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. And the best thing that we read about it was a paranormal phenomenon cannot be proved to be a paranormal phenomenon with the scientific method, because then it would no longer be a paranormal phenomenon. I'll say that again. A paranormal phenomenon cannot be proved to be a paranormal phenomenon with the scientific method, because then it wouldn't be a paranormal phenomenon. I love that. The debate on what is or isn't paranormal is a debate, and it's a debate that you can have with your buddies at the bar. Actually, that would be really fun, so maybe do that, and also go into the comments and let's debate what is paranormal and what isn't paranormal. But D News Plus, we're not always here to give you 100% definitive answers. Sometimes we just wanna talk about stuff. We wanna talk about really cool things because people are gonna have a strong opinion on any of these things. It really might come down to what some people believe and some people don't believe. Why? Because a recent poll found that 70% of Americans, actually more than 70%, believe in miracles. 42% believe in ghosts. In the UK, it's 52%. 41% of Americans believe in ESP and telepathy. And those things are all paranormal activities that people definitely have an opinion on. And some people do think that ghosts is more of a cultural thing. You know, it's helping people deal with death and the harsh truths of the world. And you know, it's finding meaning and chaos, which is something we all love to do. But one study found that if you read about a paranormal experience recently, you would be more likely to believe in those things. So you watch a scary movie that features ghosts, you're probably gonna believe in ghosts a bit more if you're asked just after that. It's in psychology, it's called prompting. In a 2009 Scientific American column, an author wrote that believing in the paranormal is an answer for the unexplained. It's a brain trying to find a meaningful pattern in the world like seeing a face on the moon. Maybe when you look at a lake and you see this thing floating there and it kind of looks like a face or a dinosaur or whatever, maybe it's a log, but maybe it's a dinosaur. We wouldn't know if we didn't go look, right? That's the best part about the paranormal is you have to look into it. It's not just devils and ghosts. If you ever had a good luck charm, you are a paranormal believer, at least in some ways. I used to carry around a rabbit's foot. And some people take this farther than others. We're gonna get all the way into that all throughout this series, so please stick around. We're gonna talk about psychic spies, people. This is gonna be awesome. Let us know down in the comments if you have any paranormal experiences in your past that you wanna tell us about. I used to live in a haunted house. It was awesome. I really liked it. It was a cool house. You let us know what you think. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the D News Plus there is this week. And come find me on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.